Now then, there were a number, a record number of hate attacks towards Jewish people in the UK last year, according to figures released today by the Community Security Trust, which is a charity that monitors the problem and provides security for the Jewish community. More than 1,100 cases were recorded in 2014, and that is actually more than double the year before. So how much do events in other countries impinge on people in the UK? Well, last night, the political and cultural commentator Jonathan Sacerdoti, who formed the committee Campaign Against Antisemitism, was in Liverpool to give a lecture entitled Israel and the Middle East, What This Means to Us in the UK, us being in particular the Jewish community. Obviously, the Jewish community has quite a strong connection with Israel. And what I think many people are thinking about this week is some of the awful things they've been seeing going on across Europe, some of the anti-Semitic events and incidences. And, and often there is some sort of association with Israel. Over the summer, many Jewish people felt that because of what was going on in the region, there was an increase here in anti-Semitic incidences. And they felt, a lot of them, that somehow the coverage of what was going on there, often in the media here, somehow encouraged it by painting quite a warped picture of what was going on. So in a sense, that's what I want to explore with this audience, is to discuss how things are covered in the UK and in Europe and what resemblance that has to the actual facts on the ground and whether this in some part plays uh, a part in increasing anti-Semitism here. It's very interesting because at the moment, Israel and the Middle East, which is a much broader area than just Israel, and of course what's going on in the Middle East elsewhere, the horrible events have been happening recently, are you going to be addressing those? Yes, in part. I think what's often very important when we're talking about Israel is to discuss the entire Middle East because it exists in a very different setting from that which we live in here. So when we just think about the events that have happened just now, for example, this brutal murder of the Jordanian pilot who was uh, in that cage and burnt to death by ISIS, well, we've got to think about what climate Israel exists in, what neighbourhood it exists in, and what the sorts of problems they face there day to day are. So often, I think, when people are evaluating what's going on in that part of the world, they're not doing it necessarily with a proper appreciation of the actual threats on Israel's doorstep. And again, in another sense, that's a very important consideration when we think about how Israel has to act in its defence and how it has to act in wars in order that the people of Israel should be safe to continue living in a liberal democracy there, which is quite unique in the region. You're, you run this campaign against anti-Semitism. Nobody surely wants to be an anti-Semite. Surely, in a sense, it's a very easy campaign, isn't it? Well, certainly the sentiment of being against anti-Semitism, I would hope, is one that most people agree with. But unfortunately, we have found that there is a need for a campaign against it because Jewish people are at threat. We only need to look at what happened in Europe to see that some people sadly aren't embarrassed or ashamed to be anti-Semites. If you go into a kosher supermarket and gun people down after holding them hostage, I think you can safely say you might need some intervention for a campaign from a campaign against anti-Semitism. And similarly... There is a problem in the UK, much less and very different. But we do have, for example, known uh, people who've been out training in Syria and Iraq who are coming back to the UK, known as sort of British-born potential jihadis. Those people have often targeted Jews across the world. So I think the Jewish community knows that there's a threat that exists to it. And moreover, it's also the case that Jews have always had high security on all their buildings and communal centres, synagogues and even schools. And we're talking here tonight in a school complex. We know exactly what it means to have high security. And when we think about why there is that need and we compare it to other schools, is it normal for most listeners to have to drop their children off at security gates like there are outside Jewish schools? Is it normal when people go to church in this country that they should have to go through the level of security they might to go to a synagogue? Jews have had that for many years, if not decades. And so we, ha we can't say there's no threat because these things are there because a threat exists. And just 2012, for example, not that long ago, there was that Manchester couple who were, uh, who were actually found guilty of preparing a bomb and they had been planning to use it on Jewish targets. And that's a bomb that could have killed dozens of people. So we know there's a threat. We know that Jewish people need to take these precautions. And unfortunately, as long as that's the case, there's a need to campaign against anti-Semitism. The word Semite means people are much more broadly than Jews or, or Israel or Israel descent. Um, there are a lot of Muslims in this country who are, who are also Semites, who are very frightened as well. Does your campaign involve them at all? Or because you're Jewish, in a sense, you're ignoring them? Well, I'm certainly not ignoring the Muslim community at all. But 
anti-Semitism has come to mean in modern usage of English, uh, Jew hatred. Uh, for the purposes of our campaign, that is what we concentrate on. We are a Jewish organisation that campaigns against anti-Jewish attacks and hatred of Jews. That doesn't mean that we think that hatred of any other minority, of course, is justifiable or correct. It's not. Uh, part of running any kind of anti-racism campaign is obviously that you have solidarity with any other minority that's uh, unfairly persecuted and discriminated against. So, of course, we're you know, talking about Jews in the case, in the example of our work, but uh, we're very much uh, holding up the, the the strong line of being proud Britons, people who are tolerant and and also co coexisting with all sorts of other religions and peoples and ethnicities in this country. That's ultimately our message: it's that Britain is a place that's accepting and welcoming of everyone including Jewish people. So when there's a threat against any of those groups, each of those threats needs to be combated and dealt with from civil society up to government and policing. Everybody needs to take it seriously so that all of these groups can feel safe together. That's Jonathan Sacerdoti and it's 13 minutes to two.